Like a phoenix from the ashes, I rise to deliver unto you my best books of 2018 list. I have five books that I want to talk about. All of them are books that I consider to be new all-time favorite books, books that I want to revisit and books that mean a lot to me. So without further ado, let's get started. Auditory Amazement – Best Audiobook Experience For this I went with Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I found this to be both educating and entertaining. I think Trevor Noah did an amazing job with delivering the narration. Uh, he is very good with accents and different uh, languages and different imitations. And I felt really emotionally invested in his story and in his experiences. And I also felt that he has a very positive outlook on life, despite having had uh, pretty rough experiences and having lived through some um, really awful things. And I thought that this was a very good sort of entry-level look into the kind of late slash post-apartheid South Africa, and it made me want to pick up more non-fiction about South Africa, which I think is a very good thing. And I just found this to be a really amazing experience, and I'm really happy that I listened to it on audio. Short but sweet, packs a huge punch in a small package. And for this I went with The Only Harmless Great Thing by Brooke Bolander. This is such a short story. It is less than 200 pages. It is told in three narratives and it was amazing. I felt like I was on the edge of my seat. I felt for all of the characters. I felt the frustration of the... Uh, radium girls of the elephants. I felt the frustration of the scientist in the future timeline of having to kind of work for the man and continue the oppression of the elephants. I just think that this book is such a well-crafted experience. It truly feels like an experience, like Every, th every time you read it, I think you will gain something new, new some, some, some new understanding of the narrative that you didn't have before. And I think that is a very powerful thing. It was a very quick read and I'm already really um, excited to pick it up again and I want my own copy. And it's very hard to explain what the story is about. but. At the same time, I feel like it's, in its essence, it is a very simple story. It's, it's told in three different timelines. One is this historical um, kind of joint uh, collective memory of these elephants about their sort of forebears of this mammoth who... Um, was the first storyteller, the first Sky Mother. And then it tells the story of the Radium Girls and their exploitation, how that exploitation was continued on the elephants of, uh, of the elephant Topsy, who is then electrocuted. And then there's this future narrative of what have we learned about all of this. And it's just it's hard to explain, but it's really simple, and I just find that it packs so much in that really small amount of pages, and I just loved it. It was great. Intriguing Ideas, a book that was fresh and innovative. For this I went with The Psychology of Time Travel by Kate Mascarenas. This was a really great story. It is very barely written, very perfunctory in its prose. It doesn't 
give you any more details than are necessary. This is a story that goes straight to the point. Uh, the prose is very uh, much a vehicle for the story and for the characters. You don't get uh, flowery descriptions, and that might throw some people off at first. But I found it really refreshing, and I loved the ideas. I loved that this is a very female-led narrative. All of the point-of-view characters, aside from maybe like one, are women. And I just think that this was a very good look at humanity and how, how humans uh, deal with um, huge emotional turmoil and how a concept such as time travel would, um, would affect people who then become time travelers. And it also has a queer love story, which I really enjoyed. So this is definitely a new all-time favorite. Wild and Wonderful World, a book with world-class world-building. For this I went with A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Now, if you've followed me any length of time on this channel, uh, you know that last year I talked a lot about this book. It made a huge impression on me and it has constantly resurfaced in my thoughts. I keep thinking about it. I can't wait to pick up the next one. And I'm just so invested in all the characters and in this world. Um, Becky Chambers has created something really beautiful. The world feels real. It feels densely populated. It feels like every single alien race has its own culture and its own way of being and and there's this there are so many different aspects to being sentient races there isn't just one way of being human so to speak and i loved this so much and can't wait for the next one and finally it's good to feel seen a book with fantastic representation for me, the clear winner for this category was Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. It had fantastic bisexual representation, on page female male relationship, on page female female relationship. The attraction to various genders was dealt with in an equal way. There was not this thing like, well, you are going through a phase or anything. No, the attraction to various genders was equal. Um, it was equally valid to feel attraction to different genders and I just loved this book so much. I loved the way it was written, I loved the ageless nature of it, the way that it could be set in practically any time. There was just this magical fairy tale quality to it and I loved it and I felt seen and I felt represented in that moment when I was reading this. I felt like, yes, this is what it's like to be me in terms of the exploration of sexual orientation. Obviously, the experience of a Latinx character is not something that I can relate to, but it was such a beautiful story and I loved it. And there you have it. Those were all of my favorite books, my all-time favorite books I read in 2018. Tell me in the comments what were some of your favorite books of 2018. Were some of them on my list as well? Let me know and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye bye!